my amazing, hello my amazing fourth graders. Today we're going to be um, reading about Charlie and Chocolate Factory, Mike Teeth is sent by television. Mike Teeth was even more excited than Grandpa Joe at seeing a bar of chocolate being sent by television. But Mr. Wonka, he shouted, can you send other things through the air in the same way? Breakfast cereal, for instance? Oh, my sainted aunt, cried Mr. Wonka. Don't mention that disgusting stuff from in front of me. Do you know what breakfast cereal is made of? It's made of all those little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharpeners. Ew. But could you send it by television if you wanted to, as you do chocolate, asked Mike Teeth. Of course I could. And what about people, asked Mike Teeth. Could you send a real life person from one place to another in the same way? Hmm, let's think about that, fourth grade. What happened to the enormous large chocolate bar as it was sent by t television? When we send something through television, what does it do to it? Hmm. I wonder if that's going to happen to our little friend here. A person, cried Mr. Wonka. Are you off your rocker? But could it be done? Good heavens, child. I really don't know. I suppose it could. Yes, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course I could. Oh, I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have some very nasty results. But Mike Teeth was already off and running. The moment he heard Mr. Wonka saying, I'm pretty sure it could, of course it could, of course it could, he turned away and started running as fast as he could towards the other end of the room where the great camera was standing. Look at me, he shouted as he ran. I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television. No, 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 cried Mr. Wonka. Mike, screamed Mrs. Teeth, stop, come back. You'll be turned into a million tiny pieces. But there was no stopping Mike Teeth now. The crazy boy rushed on, and when he reached the enormous camera, he jumped straight for the switch, scattering Oompa Loompas right and left as he went. See you later, alligator, he shouted, and pulled down the switch. And as he did, so he leaped into the full glare of the mighty lens. There was a blinding flash. There was silence. Then Mrs. T ran forward, but she stopped dead in the middle of the room and stood there. She stood staring at the place where her, where her son had been, and her great red mouth opened wide, and she screamed, He's gone! He's gone! Great heaven, he has gone! shouted Mr. Teeth. Mr. Wonka hurried forward and placed a hand gently on Mrs. Teeth's shoulder. We shall have to hope for the best, he said. We must pray that your little boy will come out unharmed at the other end. Mike, screamed Mrs. Teeth, clasping her head in her hands. Where are you? I'll tell you where he is, said Mr. Teeth. He's whizzing around above our heads in a million tiny little pieces don't talk about it well miss teeth we must watch the television set said mr wonka he may come through any moment mr and mrs teeth and grandpa joe and little charlie and mr wonka all gathered around the television and stared tensely at the screen the screen was quite blank he's taking a heck of a long time to come across, said Mr. Teeth, wiping his brow. Oh, look at Mr. Wonka. Remember they have to have glasses on for this part? They're sitting there. Mrs. Teeth doesn't look very happy. She looks kind of worried. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mr. Wonka. I do hope that no part of him gets left behind. What do you mean? asked Mr. Teeth sharply. Oh, um, it said sharply, what, I should change that. What on earth do you mean? That sounds a little bit more sharp. I don't wish to alarm you, 
said Mr. Wonka, but it does sometimes happen that only half the little pieces find their way into the television set. It happened last week. I don't know why, but the result was that only half of the bar of chocolate came through. Mrs. T let out a scream of horror. You mean only half of Mike is coming back to us, she cried. Oh, look, the text matches the illustration. Let's hope it's the top half, said Mr. Teeve. Hold everything, said Mr. Wonka. Watch the screen. Something's happening. The screen had suddenly began, begun to flicker. Then some wavy lines appeared. Mr. Wonka adjusted one of the knobs, and the wavy lines went away. And now, very slowly, the screen began to get brighter and brighter. Here he comes, yelled Mr. Wonka. Yes, that's him, all right. Is he all in one piece? cried Mrs. Teeth. I'm not sure, said Mr. Wonka. It's too early to tell. Faintly at first, but it became but becoming clearer and clearer. Every second, the picture of Mike Teeth appeared on the screen. He was standing up and waving at the audience and grinning from ear to ear. Ooh, grinning from ear to ear. Grinning. Um, I could really picture that in my mind where he's smiling so big. His corner of his cheeks looks like it's going from his entire ear. His entire face is as large as it can be with that big smile. But he's a midget, shouted Mr. Teeth. Mike, cried Mrs. Teeth. Are you all right? Are there any bits of you missing? Isn't he going to get any bigger? Shouted Mr. Teeth. Talk to me, Mike, cried Mrs. Teeth. Say something. Tell me you're all right. A tiny little voice, no louder than a squeaking of a mouse, came out of the television set. Hi, Mum, it said. Hi, Bob. Look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Grab him, ordered Mr. Wonka. Quick, Mrs. Teeth shouted shot out a hand and picked the tiny figure of Mike Teeth out of the screen. Hooray, cried Mr. Wonka. He's all in one piece. He's completely unharmed. Sorry. You call that unharmed? Sta snapped Mrs. Teeth, peering at the little speck of a boy who was now running to and fro across the palm of her hand waving his pistols in the air. He was certainly not more than an inch tall. He's shrunk. Now an inch tall would be smaller than Mr. Moose. An inch is about that big. Oh, he's tiny. Of course he's shrunk, said Mr. Wonka. What did you expect? This is terrible. Well, Mrs. Teeth, what are we going to do? And Mr. Teeth said, We can't send him back to school like this. He'll get trod upon. He'll get squashed. He won't be able to do anything, cried Mrs. Teeth. Oh, yes, I will, squeaked the... Oh, my bad. Oh, yes, I will, squeaked the tiny voice, Mike Teeth. I'll still be able to watch television. Never again, said Mr. Teeth. I'm throwing the television set, set right out the window the moment we get home. I've had enough of television. When he heard this, Mike Teeth flew into a terrible tantrum. He started jumping up and down on the palm of his mother's hand, screaming and yelling and trying to bite her fingers. Mm, he does not sound very pleasant. I want to watch television, he squeaked. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. Blah, blah, blah. Here, give him to me, said Mr. Teeth. And he took the tiny little boy and shoved him into his breast pocket of his jacket and stuffed a handkerchief on top. Squeals and yells came from inside the pocket, and the pocket shook as the furious little prisoner fought to get out. Also, who would that be? Who's that? Oh, Mr. Wonka wailed Mrs. Teeth. How can we make him grow? Well, said Mr. Wonka, stroking his beard and gazing thoughtfully at the ceiling. I must say... That's a wee bit tricky, but small boys are extremely springy and elastic. They stretch like mad. So what we'll do, we'll put him in a special machine. I have for testing the stretchiness of chewing gum. 
Maybe that will bring him back to what he was. Oh, thank you, said Mrs. Teeth. Don't mention it, dear lady. How far do you think he'll stretch, asked Mr. Teeth. Maybe miles, said Mr. Wonka. Who knows, but he's going to be awfully thin. Everything gets thinner when you stretch it. You mean like the chewing gum, asked Mr. Teeth. Exactly. How thin will he be? asked Mrs. Teeth anxiously. I haven't the foggiest idea, said Mr. Wonka. And it doesn't really matter anyway, because we'll soon fatten him up again. And we'll have to do is give him a triple overdose of my wonderful super vitamin candy. Super vitamin candy contains huge amounts of vitamin A, B, and it also contains vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin F, vitamin G, vitamin I, vitamin J, K, L, M, N, O, P, are a lot of vitamins, kids, and vitamin Z. The only two vitamins it doesn't have are vitamin S because it makes you sick and vitamin H because it makes you grow horns on the top of your head like a bull. But it does have in it a very small amount of the rarest and most magical vitamin of all, vitamin Wonka. And what will that do to him? asked Mr. T anxiously. It'll make him grow toes until they're as long as his fingers. Oh no, cried Mrs. T. Don't be silly, said Mr. Wonka. It's most useful. He'll be able to play the piano with his feet. But Mr. Wonka, no arguments, please, said Mr. Wonka. He turned away and clicked his fingers three times in the air. And as Oh, wait. And Oompa Loompa appeared immediately and stood beside him. Follow these orders, said Mr. Wonka, handing the Oompa Loompa a piece of paper on which he had written full instructions. And you'll find the boy in the in his father's pocket. Off you go. Goodbye, Mr. Teeth. Goodbye, Mrs. Teeth. And please don't look so worried. They'll all come out in the wash. You know, every one of them. At the end of the room, the Oompa Loompas around the giant camera were already beating their tiny drums and beginning to jog up and down to the rhythm. There they go again, said Mr. Wonka. I'm afraid you can't stop them singing. Little Charlie caught Grandpa Joe, dropped Grandpa Joe's hand, and the two of them stood beside Mr. Wonka in the middle of the long, bright room, listening to the Oompa Loompas. And this is what they sing. The most important thing we've learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gapping at the screen. They loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week in someone's place, we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. Look at all the little wong, um, almost said Willy Wonkas. Oompa Loompas with that big camera. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hy hy uh, hypnotized by it. Until they're absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk. Oh, yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out of the windowsill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved tot? It rots and senses in the head. It kills imagination dead. It clogs and clutters up the mind and makes child so dull and blind. He can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairy land. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think, he only sees. All right, you'll cry, all right, you'll say. But if we take that set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you what used the darling ones to do. How, how used... They keep themselves content before this monster was invented. Have you forgotten? Don't you know?
We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They'd read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott, Gadzooks, and other, and one half their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves was held books galore. Books cluttered up the nursery floor. And in the bedroom by the bed, more books were fleeting to be read. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens, and whales, and treasures, island, isles, and distant shores where smugglers rowed with muffled, muffled oars, and pirates wearing purple pants, and sailing ships and elephants, and cannibals crouching round the pot, stirring away something hot. It smells so good, what can it be? Good gracious, it's Pete Penelope. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter with Mr. Todd the Dirty Rotter and Squirrel Nutkin Pigling Bland and Mr. Tiggy Winky Winkle and just how the camel got his hump and how the monkey lost his rump and Mr. Toad, bless my soul, there's Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole. Oh, books, what books they used to know. Those children's li living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go throw away, go throw your TV set away. And in its place, you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. Then fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirty looks, the screams and yells and bites and kicks, and children biting you with sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, They'll now begin to feel the need of having something good to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They'll grow so keen. They'll wonder what they'll, they'll wonder what they've never, they'd ever seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen. And later, each and every kid will love you more for what you did. P.S. Regarding Mike T. We very much regret that we shall simply have to wait and see if we can get him back. Back. His height. But if we can't, it serves him right. Alright. That's it. Next chapter is Only Charlie Left. Alright, fourth grade. You guys are amazing. Keep up all the hard work. I hope you're enjoying finishing our class novel. Have a great one. Bye.